UTMB, a challenging journey that encompasses all the values that I've been striving to embody to pass on to my children. A genuine pilgrimage from which I have returned transformed. That day, on September 3rd, 2023, at 2.42, the final chapter of this book was being told. Yet the ink still fresh, a new tale was in the making. What is life after you materialize your objective, your goal? A dream that was your guiding star for so many years. UTMB was an obsession for me, and crossing that finish line after 45 hours battling against the darkest side of myself in the abyss of pain and sleep deprivation, among the humbling alpine titans was one of the most rewarding feelings I had ever experienced. It was a long journey filled with excitement, hard work, setbacks, disappointments and uncertainty. But I learned a lot along the way. I discovered that the most powerful strength comes from the soul, a learning that I hoped would benefit my children. But during this journey, I realized that it could also benefit others. By defining where you want to go, we define our why. Along this journey, I was able to discover sources of motivation and strength that I knew existed, but was unable to articulate. This journey was a kind of revelation, maybe because it was so difficult. It pushed me into a place we rarely explore, deep in that pain cave when the mind is not enough to pull us towards the light. UTMB is a metaphor for life, with its emotional roller coaster. I found what I was looking for, and now I want to share it. The hope that is embodied in your potential, encapsulated within your DNA, and waiting to express itself after overcoming your next big challenge. So Raf, what was your impression at the finish line? Oh, the, the finish line was absolutely incredible experience. It went beyond, I think, what I had ever imagined. The energy that is there is something that is difficult to understand if it's not you crossing the line. I was there last year as a spectator <laughs> and uh, it was moving but when it's my experience it's definitely something uh, from a different dimension. There was three things I wanted to get out of UTMB. One was the experience of the start, absolutely incredible. It really made me reflect on the, the why I'm doing this, the purpose of doing UTMB and I think it goes beyond the sport, beyond trail running. It's really uh, about life in general, uh, how you grow as a person, how you can become a better person, the ups and downs of life in general, how to deal with them and I think this sport teaches you a lot on that. The second one was the journey itself, uh, experiencing all the ups and downs that go along with the ultra run. Uh, and the third one was the, uh, was the arrival uh, and that energy that is uh, conveyed by that amount of people who are there at the finish line, absolutely epic and I can only uh, uh, recommend you guys uh, you try and experience it at least once in your life. UTMB may be behind me now, but from that arduous journey emerged a new horizon, both metaphorically and literally. My aim is to impart the wisdom garnered from this adventure and illustrates its relevance to our daily lives. This endeavor will unfold on the other side of the Atlantic, amidst the tranquil embrace of the Caribbean Sea in the Bahamas, our newfound home. It's a formidable undertaking, echoing the very essence of what UTMB taught me. 
the most exquisite and precious treasures, await beyond the barriers of our fears. Uprooting an entire family and establishing a new home in a foreign country is an immense undertaking. It was daunting. Compound that with the reality that I was navigating this transition during the final weeks leading up to UTMB and the challenge grew even more daunting. I found myself traveling back to France alone, leaving my wife and daughters to acclimate to our new surroundings. In essence, I was putting into practice the very principles I was learning. Sometimes, one must take a leap of faith and confront challenges head-on. Conquering this ordeal not only bolstered my courage, but also unveiled a realm of possibilities previously unseen. As I was rounding off the last few kilometers of UTMB, I thought my running days were over. I was setting up home on a flat island with no trails. I had to define a new family routine and get up to speed with my new professional endeavor. I thought I would not be able to fit in running, let alone ultra running preparation. And every day, I had UTMB on my mind. It truly gave me the strength to take on this new chapter in my life. It showed me that we have a lot more resilience than we think and that we can make it through tough patches. Life has a way of rewarding us for choosing to take on the difficult path. But lo and behold, relocating to the Bahamas unexpectedly increased my running volume. Despite initially perceiving it as a solitary pursuit, I soon discovered the communal aspect of the sport. Joining a local running club, which convenes every Saturday, revealed a supportive network that extends beyond the roads, a genuine brotherhood. Adaptation became my ally as I transitioned from trails to roads, honing my skills amidst unfamiliar terrain. Inspired by the lessons gleaned from UTMB, I embraced fresh challenges, setting my sights on a series of races spanning from the end of 2023 to 2024, including a half marathon, two marathons, and two ultra marathons. The half marathon marked my inaugural foray into competitive road running, presenting a stark departure from the rugged trails I was accustomed to. All right, so we're uh, just uh, 50 minutes before the, uh, the start, early wake up, uh, beautiful morning, it's not too hot, not too humid, it's a bit of wind, but uh, a lot of music as well, and uh, we're going to see how, uh, how this is going to pan out, uh, we're going to be going flat out right from the start, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how I can keep my pace uh, over 20, uh, 21k, and uh, there we go, now waiting for the buddies with whom I'll be running and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a good day. Undoubtedly, the experience proved arduous, exacerbated by the relentless heat and humidity of the region. Despite falling short of my target time of 1 hour 30 minutes due to the oppressive conditions, I secured a second place finish in my age category, a feat that left me exhilarated. Standing on the podium, a place I had never envisioned just three years prior when I was merely jogging, underscored the profound impact of perseverance and dedication. Bahamas is a wonderful place. Awesome. So that was tough. I was actually uh, aiming to do 130, but with this uh, with this heat, oh my god, 135 or something like that. Well, I could not run at the end. That was that was uh, very difficult. Very difficult. So there we go. Uh, first real uh, half marathon. Uh, very difficult conditions out there, really, with the, with the heat. Once the sun was hitting on, uh, on his heart, that was really tough. The 10, uh, 10k uh, return was, uh, was deadly. I mean, it was very difficult to, to film anything on that return because I was just dying out there. I think uh, 135, well, uh, five minutes off uh, what I wanted to do, but still not a bad time, I guess. And, uh, Especially for someone who does more ultras than, uh, than marathons or half marathons. So. Now, we're going to 
All right, so uh, Bahamas Marathon. Uh, first time I'm actually going to be doing, uh, trying to set a real time for a marathon. So that's going to be interesting. It's going to be uh, pretty hot and humid. It's already raining. Uh, been suffering chafing, uh, from chafing for quite a bit uh, since I've been running here. So I've had to tape myself up and lube myself up uh, to the maximum because it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty intense that chafing. The marathon was my next objective. I was targeting 3 hours 30 minutes during this race. Despite it being winter, the weather presented an unexpected obstacle. Hot and humid conditions, far from ideal for such a demanding race. I set off quite fast, averaging around 4 minutes 45 per kilometer, feeling strong whilst the sun had not yet risen. Good morning. Hey! It's a kilometer 7, averaging about 4.40. So far, so good. But it's early days, so let's see if we can maintain this. You're doing good. Thank you. Thank you. One minute to 13 more or less. Averaging 439. Let's see how long this can last. However, as soon as the sun's golden rays pierced the horizon, everything changed. The abrupt transition from darkness to daylight seemed to drain my energy levels in an instant. Kilometer 17 to uh, 439 average pace. Little niggle at the back of my leg. Not cool. Good job, guys. Good atmosphere on the marathon. Uh, not easy though, it's hot. Humid. Halfway now. 139 at the half. The legs are starting to feel heavy. Uh, the beautiful view. Pain cave is calling. All right, my speed has dropped off the cliff. Close to the five minutes now. Oh, I'm up to 25. It's getting tough. All right, it's getting to the turnaround. The drop in energy happened fast. Suddenly, I found myself struggling, overtaken by other runners as my pace plummeted. On our way back, into the sun. We're all feeling it. The guy in front of me now pulled out of the race. A medic's coming to get him, poor guy. Ah, uh, me too. I'm bonking. 520 now. Uh, kilometer 30. 2 hours 24. Alright, so I think the heat's got the better of me. Slowed right down to 530 now. So, tough. Kilometer 36. Feeling crap. Crap, crap, crap. All right, kilometer 40, averaging six minutes now per kilometer. Toast, 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 toast. And Thank I'm you. so proud of you, all the way, every step it takes. We can do hard things. <laughs> <laughs> Great atmosphere here. All right, we're getting there. That was tough. Man. A little under two hours, three hours, 30 minutes. Yeah, I can't read it anymore. Holy smokes. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. Finish line is in sight. Deadly. This race was a classic case of starting too aggressively and suffering the consequences. It felt good to see my running buddies at the finish. Most had done the half marathon. Even 
get up now. Um, toast. Definitely a different sport to ultra running. At least in the ultras, you have the aid stations, you have a break. Ah, uh, here, man. Non stop for three and a half hours. Full on. Uh, I'm dead. Oh my god. I need some minutes to. To recuperate that heat and humidity. Holy smokes. Oh geez, I was about to pass out. All right, I think I've uh, recuperated uh, my uh, my mind a little bit because I was about to faint there for a second. So that was, uh, that was a tough race. Let's see what uh, the overall results were and where I stand. Despite the setbacks during the race, I clinched first place in my age category. There was limited competition here, but nonetheless, crossing the finishing line just shy of my 3 hours 30 minutes goal left me elated. It was a testament of both the challenges endured and the perseverance displayed throughout this grueling race. Next was a charity race, the Hope Challenge on the island of Eleuthera. Since its inception in 2006 as Ride for Hope Bahamas, the organization has flourished with its flagship fundraiser, the Bahamas Hope Challenge. Now in its 16th year, this bike run walkathon takes place annually in Eleuthera during the springtime, gracing the Bahamas with a spirited weekend of festivities. Participants revel in a medley of events, live music, and the warm camaraderie that accompanies the occasion, all set against the backdrop of impeccable weather. Notably, every dollar raised by participants goes directly towards program support, ensuring a meaningful impact with each stride and pedal. I signed up for the marathon distance and was treating this as preparation for my next trail adventures. This time, I was going with a fully loaded pack to test out all my gear. Unfortunately, I had been sick the past few days with a flu and this race was going to take place during peak heating, so this was going to be grueling. I will be grinding through difficulty once again. Morning. Thanks, man. And here we are in the Luthra for the marathon. Uh, great event. Seems to be pretty well organized, but I'm not in my top form. Uh, was sick the last couple of days, so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. It's beautiful so far, great atmosphere. As for the half marathon and the full Bahamas marathon, I was racing with my running group, the legendary iHack. Hey! hey. Right, so I'm at 4.6, 5.25 average. So far, so good. It's hot as hell. race because it's I'm running it with the flu I've, uh, I was sick over the last couple of days and uh, it's super hot today so plus I'm loaded down with another two kilos of gear that I'm testing out for the ultras so not easy road racing is a totally different animal to ultra trails we saw this during UTMB when Ben Parks an accomplished road runner pulled out of the race for a second time running. Since I got to the Bahamas, it was my turn to taste the other side of the spectrum of the sport. And really, the two categories are actually two different sports. Hey, strong. There's always yeah. Yeah. I'll see you later. I'm doing the marathon. Yes, sir, sir. See you later. It's gonna be a very solitary race now. All my buddies turned around for the half. And I march on for the full marathon. All right, so far feeling okay-ish, just a bit hot. Uh, nice to have the pack back on. 
look, last time I had it on was at uh, UTMB, so yeah, it's been a wow, since UTMB it's been pretty incredible. I mean, that's been a pivotal moment I feel in my life. I mentioned it in the film. After my wedding and becoming a father, it's probably one of the most incredible moments in my life to pass, to cross the finish line, get under that arch. The first, uh, the start was incredible. The finish was unbelievable. And it really gave me another perspective on life. And I learned a lot of things during that race. And this old adage that the mind is stronger than the body is wrong. Because if I was listening to my mind, I would have given up multiple times, not only in the training and the preparation races, but during UTMB. It's not in the mind, it's in the heart, it's in the soul. You need a, a destination that resonates so deeply in you, gives you goosebumps. You feel enthusiasm for the dream and what I learned as, as, as I was analyzing all my feelings and emotions. I found out that enthusiasm comes from the Greek word entheos. Hey! which means the God within. So the objectives become a quasi-religious dimension. So you need to follow that shining star. You need to follow that true north, those goals, and ensure that your enthusiasm is strong enough to be able to overcome the difficult moments that will pop up along the way, along that journey. My odyssey into ultra running was driven by a quest to unravel the profound reasons behind our pursuits. Humanity's innate thirst for adventure propels us forward in myriad forms. We are aiming creatures. Every step we take is imbued with purpose, even if that purpose remains veiled, waiting to be unearthed. Even if that purpose may not be immediately evident to us, we search it by taking on a direction, an objective. Hey man, good luck. This course is pretty hilly as well, so adds a little bit of a challenge, which is good. Finally some hills, which I don't have in Nassau. We're getting to halfway, kilometer 21.4. Been pretty slow, but it's hot like hell, my goodness. I now reach the halfway point, as in an ultra, I take my time at the aid station. I'm not here to do a time, just getting more time on legs and heat train to compensate somewhat for the lack of high altitude training. Awesome. Thanks so much. Cool. See you guys. Have a good one. I'm going to eat my waffle now. Have a bit of a walk. Try to recuperate a bit. Halfway's done. So another couple of hours, I think, and then we'll be done. And I'm against the winds. That's going to be tough. Whew, it's quite windy now. Running against the wind, not easy. So that was fun. Two runs with us on that. Saturday, two runs. Gang. All right, we're at kilometer 26.3. Two hours 35 minutes in. A few stops already. Put up water and eat. But it's so hot. So it's at 10:30. So it's boiling. Not easy. <laughs> Great stuff, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Have a good one. All right, kilometer 32, just 10K left, but at least it's a little cooler now, but ah, I can feel the effort. Ah. Oh man. Thanks for everything, guys. Have a good one. Body, so tough. 
20 minutes. That was a slow one, but a tough one. And this is the best part now. And so I've settled into my new routine in the Bahamas, embracing the advantages and drawbacks of this fresh chapter in my life. Without mountains or trails for training, I've had to adapt to prepare for the next adventures. My focus now lies on the UTMB World Series events, which I find very well organized. And so my next milestone is going to be the Desert Rats 100 km race. Why do I continue this journey? Because it's only through adventure that we truly grow, mentally, spiritually, and physiologically. It's only by deliberately taking on the dragon head-on that we become braver. By sharing these adventures, I hope to inspire others to embrace their own challenges, drawing from the lessons I've learned. It all starts with a direction, an objective, Asking yourself, where do I want to go? Begin with a where that ignites profound enthusiasm within you, a destination that gives you goosebumps, and you'll uncover your why, along with the what and how of your journey. <laughs> 